Chad and Sarah, we're driving lightning, the positively charged EV channel. This episode is about the Aptera Gamma and what it's like to actually ride, ride. in the Aptera Gamma, which almost nobody on the planet has done outside of the staff right. at Aptera and the engineers. Right. And they're not talking about it. Yeah. So we don't know. What don't is know. it like to ride in Gamma? But one guy that has, yes. Dave Huerta. Yes. You're going to ask, who is Dave Huerta? Must be special. Apparently, he's really the president special. of the world. He can do whatever he <laughs> to wants. To be able to ride and gamble. Whatever he wants. This early. He... Calls his own shots. Mm -hmm. Does his own thing. Yeah, he's at Terra Royalty. He's at Terra <laughs> So, But we'll let, we'll let David tell you who David Huerta is right now. I'm fascinated with Terra. The point where I met with the team. I became an ambassador. I am a reservation holder. And I'm now even an investor. So I really believe in what Aptera is doing. And I'm super excited for our vehicles to get into our driveways. And I'm doing everything I can to make that happen. Actually, we met David at the Fully Charged Show in San Diego. And he is a super nice guy. And we're so grateful that he was willing to share his impressions of his first ride in Gamma with us. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, also, how on earth did you get to do it still? I mean... <laughs> All right, here's the Well, here, how did it happen? Here's his answer. Yeah. I was at this event in uh, Los Angeles and uh, EWC22, people too excited about investing in, in products and um, just hanging out like I normally hang out when I get the opportunity to. And Chris M kind of walks up to me and says, I want to get you a ride in Gamma. And I was like, I, mean, I don't know how, like, like, man, my chin must have hit the floor. And Chris just smiled, like as big a smile as anybody could smile. And I was just like, I just couldn't believe it. So, and this was kind of earlier on in the day. So we had to take the car, it was outside. We had to put it inside for the display for a little bit so it could be seen. It seemed like a very long day. Like every second was going by and I was like, man, I wonder if Chris forgot. I wonder if Chris meant something else. So then we finally, it was the end of the night. They were going to pack it up and they were going to take it out. And we were packing the car up. We're getting it out of the venue and we're just about to go into the street. And Chris goes, come on, get in. Well, that's awesome. But so far, I haven't seen any YouTube channels talk about the impressions of actually riding in the Gamma. Now, we've sat in the Gamma. Yep. And we touched everything, got our DNA all over yeah. the thing. It was funny because David mentioned to us that he was under the impression that when we had got, he saw us sitting in Gamma, he thought we had all of us who talked about Gamma Ooh. had been for rides in it. So he didn't even realize how special this was until after he'd ridden in it. And you found out, no, you're one of the first to yeah. ever ride in Gamma. Like you, we all want to know what's it actually like riding in Gamma. So that's what we asked Dave. So the driver gets in and Chris, Chris motions to the driver. He does this little hand thing like this. And we both look at him like, what does that mean? And Chris is like, punch it. So we roll out, out into the street. There's some, there's some traffic. So we pull back a little bit. And all of a sudden, he dumps on it. He stayed below the speed limit. I'm sure, but he jumps on it and it was like a rocket ship. Like, I mean, I have electric cars, I have fast cars, but there's something about being that low to the ground with that bubble canopy around you, really surreal. And it was so quick. I mean, it's just, just flying. And we had to slow down. We went around another corner and then he kind of takes me on another long stretch on the back and does the same thing. And it's like one of those scenes in Star Wars where all of a sudden the lights start going past you and it was fantastic and it just straight line track perfectly like it was like it was on rails so it was this very surreal moment not moving and all of a sudden it's just flying well obviously he's excited it must have been a pretty awesome ride <laughs> and we can attest to the all the quickness stuff because when we rode in the alpha version the original yeah. prototype it was super quick and it yes. handled really good and it was really kind of comfortable, but made a lot of racket. You know, it was an early prototype. So yeah, there I was would some name creaking it, and road noise. There was lots of creaking. I would have called it if it was, if I had the alpha, which by the way, if you're giving away alphas when this is all over, um, I would name mine Jiminy because it feels like there's a family oh, of crickets. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> so we wanted to know, did it still feel like the alpha? Which by the way, is fine with us. We would take it. Yep, Today, pass it if, over. If we paid 30 grand and they gave us alpha, we'd say, hey, thanks, good deal, everybody. Thank have you. A great day. But 
what was the gala like? This is what yeah. he told us. So one of the things like I've seen on YouTube and I've watched on all the channels and on your guys' channel, and they talk about their experience in the the, the earlier prototypes and that they were, you know, they were either rickety or they, you know, they didn't have doors or whatever. And this felt so not like that. It was very finished. It was well thought out, well appointed. The inside was finished and nice. It didn't have the rattle that like I hear everybody talk about. I mean, it sounded really good. And, and to think that that's, this is not it, right? Like, that's not it. Like, that's not even the car yet. Like, the car is going to be better than that. So, apparently, if you're driving your Aptera around the block, you are going to be thrilled with it. But we wanted to know Dave's impression. He drives a lot, rides a lot. We wanted to know what he was thinking as far as going on a long road trip. This is dear to my heart because our plan is when our Aptera is ready, we're going to fly out to San Diego and drive it back to Michigan. It's going to be an epic road trip. Is Aptera going to be up for that? Are we going to be comfortable in it? So that's what I wanted to know when we talked to Dave. So what's up, Dave? I have no doubt in my mind that this would be a great car for a road trip. And I'm already starting to plan out when I get mine, all the people I'm going to be visiting along the way. I can't imagine how pretty everything's going to look like when you're driving around with all this visibility in your car. Like I'm excited to like, you know, drive through like, maybe through like to the Grand Canyon area, through the mountains or, you know, through the redwoods or just, I think it's going to be like, it's just an amazing experience. And so there you have it from someone who has a lot of experience with road trips, Dave Huerta, it's as comfortable as you would imagine. Now we've sat in some sport cars where you sit low and by the time you get out of them after a longer trip, you can barely walk. <laughs> but he said nothing like that with the Aptera. But what about the seats? Because, you know, people come in all shapes and sizes. Right. So we wanted to know what is it like just to be in for, let's say, tall people? Because we met some of our taller viewers when we were at Fully Charged Live, and they were concerned about the comfort yeah, Jared and of Aptera. <laughs> Dave had something to tell us about that. Yeah. For me, the car seats were really, really comfortable. And throughout the day, we had people sitting in the car. And I remember this one young man, and he goes to school at the University of San Diego, and he was probably about 6'4", 6'5", and you know, a really nice kid. And we were talking about the car. And I said, oh, you know, why don't you sit in it? And so he goes to sit in the car and he just looks at me all big eyed. And I'm like, what? And he's like, you know, I think he was saying he drove like a Subaru Legacy or something like that. And he says, the problem I have in every car I drive is I have a very long torso and my head hits the roof. And he had plenty of room. So he was super excited just for the comfort level from him as from his everyday car and the most of the cars that he deals with. So he was really impressed with how much headroom there was in, in the cars. Well, that's great for some people, but for other people. <laughs> I'm a little more vertically challenged. For less <laughs> vertically blessed individuals, yeah. to say it that way. What's it like for people like, you know, yeah. our height? Can I reach the pedals? That's all I really want. Yeah, does Sarah gonna have to <laughs> tape a block onto her shoe so she can reach the pedal? This is Inquiring minds want to know. But Dave had experience uh, there, you know, experience about that too, he can share. Another person earlier in the day, and she was right around five feet, and she was able to adjust the seat, and she was comfortable in it. So I think it really fits a huge range of people. I think they're going to be surprised, one, how big it is on the inside. I think that's the one, one takeaway everybody has, right? They get inside of it, and they're like, wow, this really has a lot more room than I thought it was going to have. One thing Sarah and I have been saying from the beginning is that 22 2,284 miles from Carlsbad to California to Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's going to be our first road trip in the Aptera. We're going yes. to fly down, get it, and come back. So I asked Dave. And we've heard from a lot of you that you're looking forward to your drive home and your Aptera. So we asked Dave. Dave, are you looking forward to picking up your Aptera in San Diego and driving home? Here's his answer. Yeah. So, so many people I talk about when they're ready to go and pick it up, they're like, oh yeah, I'm ready to do that drive home. And I'm not that guy. Like I'm not driving from San Diego to Houston. I'm going from San Diego to Long Beach to San Jose, going to San Francisco. I'm driving by to show all my friends and and, and let them see how cool of a vehicle this is. And I'm gonna come probably through Colorado, down through the Rockies. I don't know, I'm gonna go a lot of places. Like I wanna make this epic road trip. So it's not gonna be the 1500 miles that most people would go if they were going from San Diego to Houston. I'm probably gonna put 5,000 miles on that thing before I get home. So. 
I'm super, super excited. I had to ask, because I know all of you are wondering it, including myself, did you use the cup holder? Dave, what'd you find out? I tell you what, I do, I do drink. I have a big giant drinking thing that I take with me. It's like a half a gallon. I drink a lot of water, but I did not try it in the cup holder and I should have. So we're going to have to wait to find out if that spring loaded cup holder is effective. If we get a chance to get out there, I am bringing my giant bottle or a Diet she Coke for McDonald's, and I am putting it in the cup holder. She says that, but when we saw Gamma, we were too geeked up on Nerd Energy to I'm actually gonna, try it. And but it's one a, of my biggest regrets. I had a Diet Coke in my hand before I got into Gamma, I didn't think for a second, let me try to didn't even think about it. It's it just because, a can, though. It's not the same. Yeah, but you get all jazzed up. we need to put two up. in there because it's two of us together. You get all jazzed up when you're the president. I'm of the telling you, if I get out there again and I get a chance to ride in Gamma, I'm putting something in the cup holder. We're going to have a live test of this cup holder and see okay. what happens. We'll see if that never happens. Okay, let's move <laughs> on now to something that I've never thought about because David pointed out to us that he's also one of the very few people ever to see the Aptera at night. At night. Lit up, which I never, I mean, I've seen some video. I, mean, I never really thought of how it would be different at night. And he gave us some videos we can share and some pictures we can share too to show you yeah. what he's talking about. But Dave, this was a pretty cool explanation of what it looks like at night. So one of the cool things is that there was a, a couple, she was like, oh, you know, I really wish I would have got to see it in the day. And I was like, oh, trust me, this is the best time to see it because everybody sees it in the day. Nobody gets to see it at night when it's lit up and how the lights off of the front uh, wheel skirts reflect off the body. They, like, people don't get to see this. They don't get to see how nice the LED lights light up the cockpit. So you're really getting to see it at a moment that's super rare. Like, People don't get to see it like this. And I was really surprised with the two LEDs that were above the mirror, how nice and evenly it lit up the cockpit. Like it wasn't harsh. It just had a really nice glow to it. So everything was very visible. Man, that's cool. I mean, it's just so beautiful to see the cockpit just kind of glow like that. It's yeah. trippy. And like you said, too, the wheel pant, that little yellow, red light, orange light on top, how it Reflects off the car. Wow. Orange is my favorite color. So I'm super excited about that accent. We've ordered ours that have the black seats with the orange trim, and then we're going to have the orange glow. What's and my favorite I color? am falling more in love with this. I, think I don't gray, care. I think gray is my favorite color. <laughs> Blue. Blue is your favorite gray, color. Blue my favorite I told color? you that years ago. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Um, it's super exciting. So another exciting thing, when we were at the fully charged or at the factory show before the fully charged show, we got to see an example of, of the actual live solar, but it was only on the roof of the car. Right, right. So it had been charged with the sun, which was really exciting, but there was another piece of the puzzle that Dave got to experience while he was at his show. Again, very few people in the universe have seen, seen this, this, but somehow David Huerta He's the one. has seen this. Okay. Yes. I think maybe... Maybe he's not who we think he is. Maybe he's wearing a mask. Do you mask. think he's Batman? I think he's Batman. Dave? <laughs> David? You don't David? have to confirm or okay. deny it. But anyway, <laughs> he, showed, he talked a little bit about that. Here you go. So one of the cool things when I showed up at the event was Chris walked me up and said, hey, have you seen this? Look, it's the solar hood on the nose. And it's the first time it's out in the wild. And, I, and it was just, oh, man. Like So the car was like functioning solar. Out in the wild, like it was, it was super cool to see. And of course, I'm absolutely fascinated by the exposed copper bus bars. If they can make that happen, like to me, that's such a signature move. It is, I mean, it's like the Rolls Royce uh, spirit of ecstasy on the hood. This is like, could be the greatest calling card ever. So hopefully they make that happen, but it was very cool to see it be one of the first people to actually see it outside of Aptera. So my takeaway from all of this is that in Dave's impressions are that the Aptera is like a spaceship, a lightweight, agile, but stable spaceship that you can drive right here on the earth. That's the Terra part of the Aptera. And you, you feel like you're going to hyperspace. Well, you compared it to Star Wars with the... Yes! <laughs> when they made the jump to hyperspace. So now I might have to name mine the Falcon when we get it. I'm not sure. I haven't decided on my Aptera name Nerd yet. alert. It's so true. And I own it and I love it. 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, David Huerta, for taking the time for yes. your very busy schedule of jet setting all over the globe, driving around in exotic cars. We can't tell you how much we appreciate, we appreciate taking time. the time with us to answer our questions. And thank you to our members. You are amazing. You keep the wheels churning. You make this channel happen. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. This is Chad and Sarah from Driving Lightning, the Positively Charged EV channel, where we have even more videos. Yes. Like this one right here. Have a great day. Thanks. See, this is why I love this. See, you guys will get more out of me. Like you ask great questions. Like, like you will get the content you want because you're going to get it.